After the previous video, you've got PowerCI installed, and you're probably really excited to use commandlets like these. But if you install PowerCLI, then immediately try to run commandlets like git-vm, or git-vm host, or git-data store. Notice they're all failing. Can you figure out why? I'll give you a hint. Look at the title. That's right. Before you can run almost any PowerCLI commandlet, you have to connect PowerCLI to your vSphere environment. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. Let's go see how to do this in the lab environment. Let's try running a commandlet or run git-vm, which should get us a list of all of the VMs in our vSphere environment. But as you can see, we're getting an error message because we have not yet connected. So how do we do that? Well, let's clear the screen and find out. Here's the command that we're gonna to use to connect PowerCLI to our vSphere environment. As you can see, the first thing that we're specifying is to use the connect-vi server commandlet. PowerShell itself has other commandlets called connect dash this, connect dash that. Those aren't the ones that we want to use. We want to, we need to use connect dash VI server because we're connecting into our virtual infrastructure. The next thing that we specify is the FQDN or the IP address of our vCenter server. And then we use the dash user and dash password parameters to specify our credentials. Let's go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. As you can see, we've gotten back information about our connection. So again, we can see the FQDN that we connected to. We can see the port number that we used to make this connection. And additionally, we can see who we're authenticated as. Well, now that we've done that, let's try running git-vm again and see if it works this time. Sure enough, it works. So with git-vm or git-vm host or git-network, git-data store, git-cluster, uh, with all the commandlets like those and so many others, we now have the ability to run them and see useful information. We'll talk more about those commandlets later on, but for right now, we're just gonna focus on making the connection itself. Speaking of making the connection, if I scroll back up here, take a look at that command again, and tell me, do you see anything about this command that seems like a really bad idea? I'll give you a few moments to think about this. As you can see in the command that I ran, my credentials are visible in clear text. Somebody looking over my shoulder can see my password. That's not good. So what we're going to do is authenticate in a different way that keeps those credentials hidden. So to do so, well, first what we're gonna do is disconnect from the, the vCenter server. So let's see the command for doing that. There's the command. It's pretty straightforward. It's just disconnect vi server. Go ahead and hit enter. It'll confirm. Are you sure you want to do this? Let's go ahead and say yes. Hit enter. And we're now disconnected. But we're going to clear the screen and go back and authenticate again. But I don't want to specify the credentials here on the command line. So let me abort out of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to type git credential and we want to save this information somewhere. Uh, we'll talk more about this in a bit. But what I'm using here is called a variable. So dollar VC creds is short for vCenter credentials. So I have a variable called dollar VC creds. And what it's gonna do is take the output of whatever this mysterious git dash credential commandlet is that supplied by PowerShell. So let's actually run this and see what happens. As you can see, I'm being prompted here in the PowerShell window to supply my credentials. So let's actually do that. Notice that you cannot see the password that I typed. I'm sure you can guess it. Yes, it's VMware one bang, but somebody looking over my shoulder cannot see that password. Now, as you can see in this particular case, the way I'm prompted for credentials is through the PowerShell window itself. Alternatively, you can pop up a graphical window to prompt the user for their credentials. But either way, 
user enters their credentials, they hit enter, and as you can see, we're taken right back to the command prompt again. So let's once again clear the screen and authenticate again. We're gonna go back to our previous command that we used to connect, but we're gonna get rid of these horrible, horrible clear text credentials. And instead, we're gonna say dash credential, and then followed by the variable that has our credentials. As you can see with this simple modification, I'm no longer exposing my password in clear text. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And as you can see, we are connected just the same way that we were before. And once again, if we run commandlets such as git-vm or git-vm host, we are able to communicate with the vCenter server, request the vCenter server do things for us, and we're well on our automation journey. Uh, in future videos, we'll take a look at various commandlets that you can run. But again, remember when you're done that you need to disconnect. Let's take a quick look at this snippet of code. If you look at lines six through 11, you can see that this script is repeating the steps that I just showed you. So on line number seven, we're calling the git-credential commandlet, storing the value of the credentials in our variable called $VCCreds. And then in line number 11, we're using connect-vi server with those credentials to get authenticated to our vCenter server. Now one little twist here on line number 10, you can see that we're setting up another variable called $VCenter server. Uh, by now, uh, you're starting to get a feel for how these variables work. If you don't want to have to continually type things such as FQDNs, you can store those values in variables. We'll talk more about variables in upcoming videos. Throughout this video, and here on line number 11, you can see that when I've used connect-vi server, the next argument has always been the FQDN of my vCenter server. But if recollection serves me, instead of connecting to a vCenter server, you can connect to your ESXi servers. Now I haven't done that for years. For the same reason, I use the vSphere client instead of the host client. Whether you're using the host client or you're using connect-vi server to connect to an ESXi server, either way, if you're connecting to an ESXi server, you're not going to have the full functionality that you would if you were to connect to a vCenter server. While I could still use commandlets such as git-vm, if I'm connected to an ESXi server, it's not gonna make any sense to say git-cluster because clusters are a vCenter object, not a ESXi server object. Anyways, I'll let you try that out if you'd like. If you do try it out, drop a note in the comments and let me know how that goes. All right, at this point, we know how to install PowerCLI. We know how to start PowerCLI, and we know how to connect PowerCLI to your vSphere environment. What we'll be talking about in the next video is some of the numerous commandlets that are available in PowerCLI. We're gonna start first with commandlets related to virtual machines. So click on this video and I'll see you there.